Uh, and I must say that Ruby Summer of Code is uh, one of the greatest things that can happen to, to any programmer. Uh, I learned really a lot. I worked with really uh, experienced people that, that taught me a lot. Uh, I don't know if you recognize that guy. He is Carl Kuda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some people say that actually Carl Kuda are, uh, are two people, but there's just rumors, I think. Don't do it. No, but seriously, uh, I could discuss with them uh, the entire idea and um, they uh, worked on race, so they, they prepared the stuff. Uh, I didn't uh, need to rewrite the entire race. Uh, I just uh, worked over the APIs that they prepared. And uh, Joseph Valin was my secondary mentor, but he spent countless hours on helping me uh, and discussing things, reviewing my commits. Yeah, very, very. Uh, he very much helped me. And thanks to sponsors, because it could happen only because uh, so many sponsors responded and uh, raised so much money for that. And getting, me, getting back to multiple applications. Uh, I can say that multiple applications are applications that can be mounted in some other applications. So uh, let's start with a short story. Uh, let's say that your client comes in and he says that he needs a blog and it needs to be integrated with uh, your application. And users should be able to comment using their existing profiles and uh, you should be able to display some posts from that blog on, on the main side of the main page of application. And you say that you can just write it in 15 minutes, right? Because Rails is about writing blocks in 15 minutes. But I would say that it will take a bit longer, probably, uh, because you would have to write tests and maybe some comments moderation or, or file uploads or other things that pro you, will pro you will probably need. Uh, and uh, maybe you could use existing blog software like Mephisto or Typo or something like that. Uh, but if it's needs to be integrated, you will run into problems because you will have to somehow synchronize user's table, for example, uh, or, I don't know, use two databases or merge it. This will probably cause some problems. Uh, and you should ask yourself, is, is that blog core of your business or is it just an addition that uh, Maybe you could just take generic block and mount it inside your application and don't care if it, is, uh, if it has all the features that you want. Maybe you can just stick with, with, with some generic software. Uh, and there are of course more examples that can be used as multiple applications like uh, CMS for, for example static pages or forum or file manager or any other things like that. And this nice, but how can we use it in Rails? And uh, I would ask if you are there, if you can use it now. And I can say that yes, we can use it, but in the same time I can say that it's not done as you would expect probably. Because uh, uh, our goal was to run two Rails applications in one process. And unfortunately it's hard. Uh, for example, if two applications need to set values uh, for, for some config values, uh, you must choose which application should should be uh, should win. Or if you have some middlewares like a session middleware or something like that, it should be run only once. So you would have to somehow say that some middlewares should should run only on host application. And for example, if you load one application, how do you know if it's only a dependency or if it's uh, and, and other application will be loaded afterwards, or is it host application? Uh, and uh, we don't know if it's really needed because we could probably solve the problems. But uh, if you think about that, uh, when you need to do multiple application, you would have to probably do some design decisions that are entirely different from a standalone application. So choosing only one way is much easier and yeah and, and, and you probably should, should should go that way rather than trying to do both. 
So, uh, how can we do it now? We can use engines, and probably you would think that using engines is not a good thing because we have it from race to point one, I think, and these are plugins with controllers, right? But uh, before Ruby Summer Code, engines were a bit more power powerful plugins, and right now in Rails 3.1, uh, Rails uh, will be almost as powerful as powerful as applications. So the only difference will be that you can't run engine standalone; you must mount it into other applications. But that's not a big issue issue for me. Uh, so I extended engines by uh, adding routes to, to, to engines. They now can have their own routes. Uh, middleware stack, so <coughs> engine is now ca can be now run application, and they have plugin support, so you can add plugins just like in normal application. And of course, there are new APIs that can handle communicating be between engines. So the most ah, uh, so these things are only available at edge version of Rails. So if you want to play with it, you should just clone it from, from GitHub. And the most important thing is mounting an engine. So here I just uh, mount block engine at slash block. So all the controllers from that engine are now av available at slash block uh, address. And the second important thing is that now you can isolate engine. So what do I mean by isolate? Uh, if you have, for example, engine like device, it's uh, authentication system, it should be shared with application because it is just an addition to application, but if you have something like blog or forum, it, would, it should probably be treated as separate application and not share, for example, helpers and routes and stuff like that. So if you try to build a multiple application, you should use isolated engine. And we can isolate engine inside some namespace. So here I said uh, isolate namespace block. And now that engine is isolated inside that namespace. And we need namespace for two reasons. Because we want to avoid conflict if you have two comments model models, uh, for example, in block and CMS, multiple applications. Without namespace, they will conflict and you will, not, you, you will get nowhere. And the second thing is that we need to recognize if object belongs to engine. So uh, here we have block post model. And we know that this, the in, this instance, uh, that, uh, that, that instance variable post, is from block engine. We can check it and we can do further things with it. So I will tell now about a couple of effects of isolation. And the first one is that in race two point in in race two uh, or even in race three point oh, uh, if you had uh, a controller, even if 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 it was namespaced, it got all the application helpers. So you couldn't do something like isolated controller that will get only helpers from, from, from some namespace. And with isolated engine, you, you just have it. It has only routes from that engine, and it will have only routes from, uh, only helpers from, from, from that engine, from, from that namespace block. And the second thing is that when controllers are, are namespaced, you normally would have to do uh, to scope all the things inside routes. And with isolated engine, you don't have to do it. It is done automatically, so you don't, you don't have to write that code that is connected. Um, and next thing is uh, avoiding prefix, because it will be pain to write through, through the entire application to, uh, to write uh, block underscore something. So in shared engine, if you have block post, you will end up with names like block underscore post title, and you will have to use params block underscore post. And in other isolated engine, we know that all the models are, and controllers are prefixed with that, uh, with that block underscore, so we can skip it because we know how to do it. The same with paths. Normally, we would have to write block underscore post path, 
and in the isolated engine you can just use post path. So it's much easier to do that. You don't have to write prefixes everywhere. And also with generators know about namespaces. Uh, when you generate model, for example, in uh, isolated engine, it will generate a uh, model inside namespace and will automatically create uh, migration with a namespace table so we don't have conflicts in database. And uh, the next thing that is that, that is uh, that is very important is uh, a route because if you have isolated application, it will, it it will have its own router. So here we have a controller uh, block post controller. So it's controller for from our block engine. And if you want to use post path, we can do it like we would normally do in in, in regular application. But we can also call uh, route from host application or some other engine by saying here main app dot root path. So it will get a path from application's router. And here the same, this is a controller from application. And we can use root path as normally we would do, but if you want to get uh, some route from, from engine, we can do block dot post path and it will get route to, to our post path from, from block engine. And we can of course change it. Uh, we can say the mom block engine as shiny block. And we could do now shiny block dot post path. So you can change it if, if it conflicts with something else or, or, or you just don't like the name or something. And chances are that you will need static assets. So you can do it in two ways. You can use config.serve static assets uh, that will serve static assets by action dispatch static, or you can copy assets to applications public directory by doing create blog install assets. You can do the same thing with, with migrations. Uh, you can do rake blog install migrations, and it will copy all the migrations to applications direct directory. And you can do you can do both things by saying create blog install. And as you now know APIs, you probably wonder how to create an engine. And you can do it by saying race plugin new, give the name of the engine, and pass minus minus home table and minus minus edge action. And I don't know if it's in core now, because Jose said that he will manage it, but I don't really know that if he does it already, so if it isn't uh, in on GitHub, it will be probably tomorrow. And after doing that, you can just, for example, generate scaffold post and run the server. And it will behave just like normal application, <coughs> just mounted at some prefix. And I said that uh, it's not possible to. Uh, run engine standalone, so you need some application to run it inside, and it's di done by creating dummy application in test dummy. So when you use things like script trace server or script trace console, you just use the dummy application and the engine is mounted inside. And my work is pretty much pretty much finished, but. Uh, we will need to battle test the APIs. So if you want, if you are interested in the, the topic, you can just grab it from from uh, GitHub and try it. And I would like to people to, to uh, set some standards like authentication and authorization. If we will use standards like, for example, we have now current user for for almost all authentication systems. And we, if you would have similar APIs for, for other things, the chances that if you take two multiple applications and mount it in, in, in other applications and, and it would just work, would be much bigger. And I would like to have some feedback. So if you have some complaints uh, or if something doesn't work as you would expect, just uh, message me or on Twitter or on GitHub. You can work on GitHub, actually. Uh, yeah, and I'm Drogis on Twitter, so you can follow me or message me or something, and we can talk about multiple applications or whatever else. Yeah, and that's all. Thank you. Any questions? I don't know how, how much time I took. You can go as long as you want. Yeah. Ah, okay. If you want so, to take some questions, go ahead. Yeah, so maybe
only one or two questions, I don't know. So when you do multiple Repeat applications, the question, uh, uh, so question was about if you have an engine and it has a uh, separate mm -hmm. database, uh, uh, if application and engine has separate databases, what, what can you do? Uh, so if you uh, develop a multiple application as an engine, you probably, uh, the, the easiest way would be to just use one database. So if you use active record and multiple application use also active record, uh, all the tables will be namespaced, with the, uh, will be prefixed with the, for example, block underscore prefix. So the best way to, is to just run with one database. Uh, and if, for example, multiple application uh, needs something like Mongo or uh, your, your application needs uh, like, I don't know, MySQL or something, um, you probably will not, uh, you probably can't do it. Uh, if it's something that is completely separate and it doesn't need any tables from, from host application, it could work, but uh, if you, for example, need to share user's table, uh, it should be one database and one, uh, probably one or, 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 uh, or maybe even two ORMs, but it, they, they should have uh, one convention of tables. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that last comment you made, that, like, let's say we share a user model I mean, and, and you're relying on, on, on the hosting app to have some sort of user object. And where do you, is there a place where you and put an adapter, how, how do you handle that? Uh, actually, it's a hard question because I, I haven't done much engines, because uh, I haven't the time after creating these APIs, but uh, probably the, uh, because uh, I said that uh, designing application to be both standalone and multiple would be hard, and this is one of the reasons that uh, in standalone application you, you, you should have users, user model, and in uh, Montable, you should use uh, uh, you should use user model from from host application, and I think that uh, the best way to do it is uh, just uh, some engines that I saw that, that, that uh, did it already uh, do it like uh, either checking if if there is user model and using it or uh, making it easy to, to configure it. So you just pass a uh, class name of whatever would be user model. Like for example, devices, it is a shared engine. It is not uh, uh, isolated application, but uh, it uses, uh, you, you can just say what will be something, uh, what will be the user model. So uh, I think that it will be the best way to, to just have some API to, to tell that uh, our user model is this. Uh, yeah, and maybe create some hooks so you can, for example, uh, give callback to, to authenticate or, uh, or, or to authorize something. Yeah, but it, 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 it should be done probably like that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Thank you.